We have now completed the model. Go to Run Building Analysis. The Pre-Analysis tab allows you to set the basic assumptions of the model and analysis. Pick Parameters. The code tab shows you the design code, loading code. We will cover the earthquake code options separately. The foundations tab allows us to set the allowable soil stress and also the soil subgrade coefficient for foundation design. Pick select and there is guidance on the various subgrade coefficient for different soil types according to this reference. The foundation settings will only be used in the foundation design after we have run the building analysis. In the lateral loading tab, we can choose the option to apply notional horizontal loads at story levels automatically. Entering a value of 0.015 is equivalent to 1.5% of the dead load which will be automatically applied as lateral load at each floor level. Refer to the Euro code on the definition of number of contributing members. Conservatively, we'll leave it as one in both directions. The life load participation factor and the number of modes calculated is only relevant if we choose to run an eigenvalue analysis. The lateral drift tab contains settings for bracing of columns and walls. In this model, we have walls, so we assume that all the columns are braced. And also walls in direction 2 is braced automatically by wall in direction 1. Along direction 2, our columns are still braced by the wall. And conversely, the direction 1 walls are braced by the direction 2 walls. In short, in direction 1, walls in direction 1 are bracing members. Along direction 2, walls in direction 2 are considered the bracing members. Bracing status of each member can also be modified individually in the column and wall designs stage. Sway amplification coefficients are automatically calculated after building analysis. However, you can check user define and enter the amplification factor manually. The title tab allows you to enter the project header and also other basic information of this project. This information will appear in all the reports. Click OK to save and exit the parameters. Pick load combinations. In the load combination editor, we will first need to set up all the load cases and then create the relevant load combinations. However, it is easiest just to use the loading generator to generate both the load cases and load combinations. Pick load generator. Check define date load G and define life load Q. Pattern loading can be defined automatically. The first option here shows alternate span loaded with the first span loaded. The second load pattern is also alternate span loaded but with the first span unloaded. The third pattern is the first two adjacent span loaded with the third span unloaded. The direction dependent pattern loading will ensure that pattern loading is done for direction 1 as well as direction 2 on the plan view. If you wish a more onerous analysis, you can check all the options. These load factors will be used to generate the load combination. If you wish to run a construction stage analysis, you can check the option to generate stage construction cases. The seismic loading are disabled because we have not chosen a seismic code of practice. Check notional loading to automatically generate the notional horizontal load cases. There are also options to automatically generate the wind, soil pressure and temperature loading. Ensure that these options shown are picked and click OK. Okay. All the load cases and load combination will automatically be generated. The columns are the load cases. You can review and change your load cases by picking the load cases table. Specifically, the load table shows the QPs are the pattern load cases. And due to the different load pattern arrangement and load patterning in different directions, we have a total of 10 load pattern cases. There are options to add more load cases, to edit the load cases or to delete. Click Cancel. Each row denotes the different load combinations. Combination 1 is for the case where the date and life load are fully loaded. Combination 2 to combination 11 are pattern load combination. The load combination names can be edited. For example, I can add a G to denote that all this load combination includes the date load. 
click OK to save and exit the load combination dialog. Pick Story Loads and Parameters. The mass of each story and the coordinates of the center of gravity of each floor is listed in the table. We can expand the folder to review more information. The notional horizontal load will only be calculated and shown after the building analysis has been done. We will revisit this menu after we have run building analysis. The material table shows what is the concrete grade and the design reinforcement steel grade used. Pick Edit Materials to review view or change any of this assumption. Under default materials, we can set out all the defaults that will be used for all the members. Click on the concrete grade of the column and we can choose a different concrete grade if we wish. We can also review the material properties and the design parameters of a particular concrete grade. Click Cancel to exit without changing. We can also review or change the steel grade by clicking on Grade 500. Review the properties and also the bar parameters. If you wish to add a new grade of steel, simply select the plus icon. Pick Cancel. The diameter menu allows you to pick and choose the bar sizes that you want to use for the design of the members. We do not want to use 40 diameter for our project. Uncheck H40. Pick OK to save and exit. By default, the foundation materials are also set up separately so you can have separate concrete grade, steel grade and diameter of the bars. If you have a story having a different material grade from the default and foundation, you can set up a new material group by picking the plus sign. Pick OK to save and exit. Go to Model Options tab. Under the Story Degrees of Freedom, there are various options. X and Y refers to the horizontal and vertical degree of freedom on the plan view respectively. Torsion refers to the rotation of the floor on the plan view. For a freestanding structure, we should choose X and Y and torsion permit. As we move down the list, we are progressively restricting the degree of movement of the building. Ensure that the first option is chosen. The rigid zones options allows you to consider the rigidity of the beam column joint. This figure here shows the three options of rigid zones. This is the beam column joint where rigid zone can be considered. In the analysis, the column analytical line is right at the centroid of the column. As for the beam, the analytical line is assumed to be at the top of the beam. When rigid zone equals to none is selected, the beam bending moment diagram is taken right to the column center line. As for the design moment of the column, is taken right to the top of the beam. When rigid zone maximum is chosen, moments at the face of the section are used for design. Rigid arms extend to the section parameters. In layman's term, the beam moment is taken to the face of the column. For the column design, the moment is taken to the soffit of the beam. For the option of reduced by 25%, Moments generated 25% from the parameter of the section will be considered. And this affects both the beam design as well as the column design. In general, the use of rigid zones reduced by 25% will result in the maximum reduction in support moments combined with a less extreme reduction in the span moment. It is considered that this option will give maximum efficiency and will be preferred option for most engineers. However, for the first run of the structure, we recommend that no rigid zone is considered as this will give the most conservative result. For wall model, there are two options, meet peer by default or finite element shells model. For beam section assumption, rectangular is assumed by default, but you can also choose flange beam if you want. For story diaphragm model, by default, slabs will define the rigid diaphragm. This is the recommended option unless you have reason to choose otherwise. The stiffnesses tab allows you to adjust the stiffnesses of the members, specifically the modulus of elasticity, moment of inertia, torsional stiffness, and the section area. Take note that a torsional stiffness of 1 or 100% will result in 
secondary beam generating torsion force on the primary beam. If you want to avoid such situation, you can reduce this torsional stiffness to say 5% or 0.05. Go to the settings tab. The option to issue warning for cantilever beams not marked will check for any cantilevers in the project that are not marked properly. Issue warnings for unsupported columns before analysis will check for any hanging column, that is any column without any support. The third option here simply allows you to include member section properties in the post analysis report. Create detailed analysis echo file forces the creation of a very detailed program input file. Sparse Hover is an advanced analysis option which will speed up the analysis of a model with many walls with FE shells assumption. However, the analysis is also more stringent in terms of modeling errors. We suggest that you uncheck this option for the first few analysis. Total horizontal drift limit is the lateral deflection of the floor with respect to the ground level. Relative horizontal drift limit is the lateral displacement of the floor with respect to the floor below or the interstory drift limit. Axial load comparison tolerance controls the difference between the input and output gravity load of the project before and after running the building analysis. There are two ways to calculate the story weight. In a particular story, if there are slabs that are not transferring their loads to the beams, we should use undecomposed slab loads. For example, flat slab system. For beam slab systems, both options are acceptable. Go to the analysis tab. The building model chart will check the most common errors in the model. It is recommended that you perform a building model chart progressively as you build your model, so that modeling mistakes or errors can be captured early and rectified accordingly. Pick building model check, and these are the checks that will be performed. They are self-explanatory. Pick start. If there are any errors, the member label will be specifically stated. Action should be taken to check and rectify the error. Cancel to close this window. The eigenvalue analysis will give you the mode shapes and natural frequency of the structure. Under the analysis tab, there is also the option to perform column and beam reinforcement design. However, you should check and verify that the analysis results are correct before moving on to member design. For this reason, we do not recommend that you perform analysis together with the design of the members unless you are satisfied that the analysis result is correct. Pick start to perform the analysis. During the building analysis, the beam load calculations are completed based on your loading method. By default, it is U-line. The slab loads are distributed onto the supporting beams. All the load data is accessed. The weights and the mass of each story are calculated and any notional horizontal loads are determined. Also, Photostructure is intelligently checking the model internally during building analysis for any modeling mistake or irregularities. For example, if there are unsupported columns or walls or if there are large deformation over a meter, there will be a warning message. Generally, warning and error messages should not be ignored and should be investigated fully and corrected steps taken. This model runs without any warnings or errors. However, that does not mean that the model is error-free or the analysis result is completely correct. Hence, next we will learn how to check and verify the results. Click OK after reading the building analysis messages.